Ich wollte eine Geschichte erzählen ähm, über einen Ort, über einen Lieblingsort von mir, der ganz, ganz toll sein kann und ganz kuschelig und weich. Ähm, aber der auch ein ganz, einmal ein, kann auch ein großes Verhängnis sein, wenn man da zu viel ist. In the story is also like the sound involved, like alcohol pouring in and rolling a cigarette. So decided to just take a walk. And Conrad had with a pencil in, in blue, or was it Gregor, or was it Toby, or... Was it Conrad or Gregor or Toby painted a small map for us? Natürlich öfters auf meine Karte gucken, bevor ich, weil ich ja die natürlich nicht ähm, ähm, in meinem Kopf habe. Und so ist es dann passiert, dass ich ein, ein Kuriosum entdeckt hatte, nämlich ein, eine Straße, die direkt durch einen See führte. Da habe ich mir gedacht, das ist ja spektakulär, durch einen See, eine Straße, da muss ich hin. Als ich wieder erwachte und als ich wieder bei Bewusstsein war oder alles wieder bewusst wahrnehmen konnte, wusste ich noch nicht genau, was los war. So all around us was this war scene, like outside. It was nothing, like this. Uh, destroyed, abandoned castle on a hill. And, you know, I thought that was really cool, first of all, because I thought castles were really cool. And, and um, then there was a fire, I think from lightning or something. So castle burnt down, well of course it's stone so it didn't burn down, but all the wood parts, you know, burnt out and then it was abandoned, so now it's just this like yeah, I mean castle ruins, but it's only a hundred years old, it's not like from the medieval times, you know and um, it was my favorite thing, absolute favorite thing and um, I just kind of like threw and imagine, I don't know, I don't really We would always just play up there and it was the world of imagination to us, it, like there was cupboards and drawers in every bit of the surface and the window sills you know there was the it would open up in a trunk there was like doors on the side and like you could just like and every time we just dig through everything and everything every tiny little dust bunny and like mothball was a magical realm to me and my brother you know <laughs> oh, <a> magical <laughs> realm. and uh the great thing about it was that then there's an arcing roof, and then on the walls were these doors that led to uh, a crawl space. Uh, um, just to sneak in? Like, yeah, into, uh, and the thing was that like there was a dresser, and uh, the bed was in the way of these doors. You couldn't get them open. There was one door that you could open. Yep. But that was covered, uh, like, piled full of trunks and, like, suitcases and things. And these drawers are, like, four feet tall, you know? Because of the slant of the roof. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But to me and my brother, it's like, oh, the dwarves live in there, you know? It's just like this, I'm like, ooh, what's behind this door, man? And I tried to go down the first tunnel, the one closest. And there was a tunnel, like, for water, just the water tunnel like like concrete made out of concrete like the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. so what we did is like we cut it down till the tunnel and then we we went in the tunnel to lick to 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 cut uh, the bushes on the other side so we could go further and on the other side was just bushes and nothing this was our kind of dreamland like the, the grown-ups yeah. could never reach it they, I think they called us the pigs, the pigs from uh, the uh, artisanal zone. Uh, we would go upstairs and there's two rooms upstairs, the door on the right, the door on the left. I tried the middle tunnel. <laughs> the Kreise zogen sich immer enger zusammen. Was außerhalb dieser Kreise war, konnte ich immer deutlicher erkennen. Durchaus auch, woraus diese Kreise bestanden. Manchmal mit einer neuen Information bekam einer der Kreise eine Delle und ich drohte aus der Bahn zu stürzen, zu taumeln. Aber es war schwer, 
who saved us. He he maybe he had a compass for breakfast that day, I don't know. Or I think he had. Aber ich sah dann und der See sah aus wie jedes andere See auch. Nur keine Straße führte ihn durch. Dann erkannte ich, dass ich den ganzen Weg umsonst gefahren bin. Denn diese Straße existierte nicht. Sie war nur ein Druckfehler. All the big artificial mountains back in the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Artificial mountains, artificial lakes. And, the, and, yeah, and the, the mountains, they were quite high. I mean, mountains, hills. So, got back out of there and uh, went to the final tunnel, the furthest tunnel. She saw a machine in the forest who picks up the trees and cuts it and puts it on the back, shredders it and puts it on a truck, you know, like to cut, like it's a huge emptiness and just like, like the, like sticks and leftovers on, on this war field. You ever seen trees, maybe? Trees mostly quite look the same. It takes a long time to, to you know, um, um, see their individuality because trees are individual. They are individuals too. And I looked up and there are all these mud nests from all these mud birds, you know, that uh, obviously weren't too excited about me being there. And so they started, even though it was still pissing down rain, were freaked out and started to just come out in droves and I was watching them all stoned, just amazed by how many little birds fit in each hole. And they slowly kind of filled the sky, you know. And I just became enchanted by this place. There were some ravens we were to told about that should be in some forest. And you, they, people told us, yeah, you, You'll be able to hear them and they make. <lacht> Klänge, Melodien und Rhythmen zogen mich dann aber trotzdem immer wieder auf die Kreislinien zurück. Es ging weiter. Neue Informationen, die die nähere Umgebung dieses Ortes beschrieben, kamen hinzu. Auch was in dieser näheren Umgebung während der Zeit, in der ich angeblich dort war, geschah, wurde mir berichtet. Und die Kreise verringerten ihren Radius. I was really upset and I was crying and I went there. I was really disturbed and kind of like sobbing, sobbing, heaving sobs, you know, inconsolable. And the, these dragonflies just started to land on me. At first it was like one and I kind of was like, oh, oh, oh. but then I kind of just watched it. It didn't leave and then more and more until they, I mean, they weren't covering me, but they were landing all over me. And there's this weird red color, this kind of blood red. And I just felt them kind of eating all of my negativity, all of my negative energy, until I felt really happy. I mean, really, really at peace, really blissful. And, you know, I was also starting to ache a little bit, so I moved around and they all flew away. And I looked up, and this was really weird, but I looked up and standing right above me, kind of on the bank, the, on the far bank of the creek, was a coyote. Because the dog was actually a really dangerous dog. Nach und nach wurden die Ereignisse außerhalb des Kreiskernes wichtiger und die Motivation, unbedingt alles über diesen Ort zu erfahren, sank mit der Freude an den Dingen, die ich wieder wahrnehmen und ausführen konnte. And he built an airplane of this material, you know, that, so of a certain material. And then we went up, all of the children, up the hills, and he put down the, this, this airplane. I remember that really well, and he was really good. He studied engineer later, so he was really good at this time. Too. And his airplane was really beautiful and flying, you know, in the sky. And then my dog, He runs after it, and all the kids, uh, he especially, said, it's my airplane, it's kaput. 
I kill you and your fucking dog. You know, because he, he was a big German Shepherd, right? And I was, oh God, oh God, the dog will destroy it. You know how it is. It was incredible. He took the airplane so carefully in his mouth, completely careful. He br ran it back and put it in front of his feet. The airplane was 100% perfect. Just staring at me. Pretty fucking scared. You know, like, he hadn't noticed me because I was being all still. And I was just right there. And he was just right there. Ganz ließ er mich nicht los. Und bei Zeiten befinde ich mich auch noch auf seinen Umlaufbahnen. Allerdings scheint mir jetzt doch eines klar zu sein. Dieser Ort trägt keinen wirklichen Namen und besteht aus nichts. Dass ihr von eurem eigenen Schnarchen aufgewacht seid. 